Oh, there are several telltale signs of a video being doctored. So I ran every check I could think of on the murder footage, and wouldn't you know it, nothing came up. Most likely, we're looking at the real deal. Most likely? Well, no one can claim with absolute certainty that it wasn't altered in some way. Which means it's not substantial enough to prove Ihara's guilt. At least not in a court of law. Gotcha. Do you know when and where the footage was uploaded? It was posted sometime last night, but the source is too hard to pin down. The uploaders spread it across multiple servers overseas in a well-concerted effort to hide their tracks. Makes sense. But I'll bet it ultimately came from Mikoshiba's killers, no matter how real or fake it is. How do you figure? Think about it. No one could have staged that unless they knew the specifics of how Mikoshiba was killed. From how he was positioned to little things like the blood on the ground, every last detail was just as the detectives described it. That's a good point. <sighs> All this browsing's really taken a toll on the old pinky. Looks like another visit to Ehara might clear things up. You should ask Shirosaki-sensei about it. Yeah, that was my thought too. Ah, let me get this straight. Ehara went and felt a lady up on the day Mikoshiba got killed on purpose? Oh, if that's the case, why the hell would he upload a murder confession after the fact? Is he trying to get caught? Only Ehara could answer that one for you. I want to ask him that question myself. So, we're off to see Saori-san then? Let's hit it. Hold the door, please! 
Huh? Mafia? You're here? It's been too damn long, Mafia Chan. Yeah. By any chance, Yagami kun, are you working on a case for salary? A video got leaked. It depicted a man committing a murder. Are you here about the Ahara case too? Of course. The prosecutor's office is in total chaos right now. Especially the higher-ups. I'll bet. After all, they're the ones who pushed for Ahara's battery conviction. If that video is real, that would mean Ahara got them to hand him a slap on the wrist instead of a murder conviction. Yes. And it's not like the prosecution can say, Sorry, Your Honor, we'd like a do-over, after the fact. To make matters worse, everything leading up to the trial was broadcast all over the news. Changing our tune now would undermine public trust. That's for sure. So, for the time being, our department is trying to predict how the defense will approach the situation. Hence why they sent me here to check in on my good friend Salary. Totally no strings attached. <laughs> well, that clears up a lot. There you kids are. Figured you had to show up sometime. Mafia? You're caught up in this too? Yeah, she ran into us downstairs. I'm sure you can work out that I am here to spy on you. But wouldn't you like to know what we're up to as well? Are you sure that's your only motive coming here? Sorry? Something like a professional excuse to see Yagami-san? <laughs> in your dreams? I had no idea Yagami-kun was involved until just now. All right. I'll accept that. For now. <laughs> Gotta say, I miss this little banter. Needless to say, our office is going through this footage with a fine-tooth comb. That said, they've already determined their stance. They've deemed it an unreliable source and therefore useless as evidence. Basically, they want it to look like it was considered and already thrown out. Huh? So, they're not gonna verify the video? Not even question Ahara about Mikoshiba? Nothing? Nope. Not after it was proven in court that Ahara committed sexual battery on October 7th. I mean, wouldn't you say a conviction has a certain finality to it? Besides, there's no way Ehara could have murdered Mikoshiba within that limited time span. Right. Which means the murder video doesn't really add up, does it? What are you getting at? I'm saying the prosecution believes the video has been falsified. Special effects, CGI, whatever it is, we're not buying it. Huh. Furthermore, the prosecutor pushing that stance was the one who handled Ehara's trial. And that is... His name is Sadao Takano. He was the one gunning the hardest for Ahara the first time around, especially considering his officer status. He kept insisting justice be served, which got the public behind him rather quickly. He certainly looked the part of the people's prosecutor, grilling Ehara in court. So what you're saying is, Takano could never accept anything but Ahara's original sentence. Since this footage of the murder contradicts that finding, he just thinks it's a sham. Yes, and he'd add that a fair trial's result can't be challenged by some video on the internet. Well, who could honestly trust a system that changes its mind so easily? Both the prosecutor's office and the court are beholden to the case as Takano-kun presented it. But that's just sweeping the issue under the rug. It has a domino effect, too. The police are beholden to the verdict we got, so their hands are tied. This applies to both Tokyo and Kanagawa. Really? Why's that? Supposedly, they don't want to get involved with Ehara until they're sure the video is real. They come in with a list of questions about the murder, 
It'll show that doubt's being cast on the original ruling. Yeah, but no one can prove that the video's real. Right. There's no way to verify the legitimacy of an untraceable video. But if the police aren't allowed to see Ahara, he'll never even become a suspect in the murder. That means he's untouchable. Exactly. None of the detectives are happy about that. Especially down in Kanagawa. Their job is to bring in a suspect, but their leads are all ending up at the same dead end. Until recently, people were lining up to bring Ahara to justice. Yet somehow, his involvement in a murder totally derailed that. Don't be so surprised. No cop would ever want to undermine a ruling based on their own findings. Anyone who wants to go against the grain's gonna need hard evidence on their side. So the case goes cold, all to save face for the court and the prosecution. If Ahara really did commit murder, it'll have been the perfect crime. This debacle only serves as proof. True. It would turn the trial into a farce. There's no way we're letting this go. But wouldn't challenging this mean going up against the entire system? Yeah. That scare you? Not at all. In fact, I was just thinking, we're the only ones who could take a case like this. Ha! <laughs> That's the good shit, kid. This whole time, we've been writing off Ahara as a convicted sexual predator but it's looking more and more likely the court played right into his hand. As for me, I'm done being played for a fool. Then you've heard what I came to say. And with that, I will be on my way. But if you need help, just ask. I think we're good for now, but thanks. That did clear up a lot. No problem. See ya. Was Mafuyu-chan cuter than ever, or what? Think maybe it's time to light that flame again, eh? How many times do I have to tell you it's not like that? Anyway... What I'd like to do is ask Ahara about that video face-to-face. -face. Any chance we could see him again? I was actually about to suggest that. Uh, one moment. It's from Ahara's prison. What? Hello? Yes, this is Shirosaki. Yes, I can talk. His prison? Why would they call us directly? Guess we'll find out. Understood. I appreciate the candor. That was one of the prison wardens. He was asked to convey a message from Ahara. About what? In short, he won't be speaking with his representation any further. You're joking. To be more specific, he said he's not taking any more questions. It seems he fully grasps the situation, even in custody. How... how is that even possible? I'm guessing the murder footage that was uploaded yesterday was also planned out in advance. That or Ahara's conspirators have to be filling him in. How else could he predict we'd try to see him again so soon? I can see either of those scenarios making sense. But only someone on the force could be leaking insider information to him like that. Damn. This shit's turning into a full-blown conspiracy, eh, Tuck? Whatever it is, it's screwing up our plans. Yeah. The timing couldn't have been worse. Now what are we supposed to do? Come on. There are plenty of leads that don't involve grilling the culprit. Yeah? I'd like to hear them. Well, if it were me, I'd start with Saurikun. Okay. The first thing I want to learn is whether Ehara is really the murderer in this footage. Given the entire sexual battery incident as an alibi, there is no way he could have murdered Mikoshiba. However, this new footage knocks the bottom out of that premise. Right. Either his alibi or the murder footage. One of the two's been fabricated.
I think we should revisit the harassment case. When the sentence came down in court, no one expected it to end up as a murder alibi. Plus, everyone suspected Ahara was working alone. He may have not been. All this makes a huge difference. No one would suspect a train groping to involve accomplices or alibis. The search for evidence wouldn't be as intense as for a murder. But the entire incident was caught on camera, top to bottom. There's more than enough physical evidence, too. Then we'll need to verify each and every aspect of the case. Okay, what first? Should we investigate the crime scene again? Maybe we'll discover something new if we check out the station during the crime's actual time frame. No, I think we saw everything we could there. Actually, if we're reviewing evidence, we could do that from right here, couldn't we? What catches your eye specifically? I ask because fabricated evidence would likely show signs of tampering. This would prove Ahara's alibi doesn't hold up. This part's still getting to me. Well, of course. That's what made us all question his alibi in the first place. Even Hoshinokun got that far. <laughs> Low blow, sorry, son. You're right. That didn't even need mentioning. You get the picture now, I hope? This part's still getting to me. The Shinjuku station diagram? Did something happen at the platform? Well, the majority of the incident was caught on camera. But I don't think we have any footage of what happened around here. It's not much, but it's a blind spot all the same. Hoshino-kun and I confirmed that at the scene. Okay, but how would this blind spot change anything? The first thing that comes to mind is, gives Ahara a chance to swap with the stand-in. The real Ahara murdered Mikoshiba and Ijincho at 7.30, then headed to Shinjuku Station. Then, just after 9 o'clock, he swapped places with the stand-in, getting caught on purpose. So you're suggesting that there were two Aharas at Shinjuku Station? Yep. 
and the true assailant, the Ahara lookalike, disappeared into the crowd. Wait, if what you propose is true, does that mean Ahara never touched the victim? Yeah. But the police inspection revealed trace fibers from the victim's clothing on Ahara's hand. Ugh, trace inspection. Yeah, so no matter what, the fact that Ahara touched the victim remains standing. The victim felt his hand reach under her skirt right after the train departed Ikebukuro. She was scared motionless for the entire commute until arriving at Shinjuku Station. Could you describe the victim for me? She's an office worker married to an industrial designer. Also has a six-year-old son. Full name, Yui Mamiya. 30 years old. A wife and mother. Perhaps if we talk to Mamiya-san directly, she could give us more insight than that video. She may even recall something none of us know, upon learning Ahara's alibi might have been fabricated. That's a good plan. We'll finally have a fresh source of info. In that case, give me a moment so I can get a meeting set up. We should have her address and other information somewhere on file. Bear in mind, Mamiya-san was the victim here. As the assailant's defense, I doubt we'll get a warm welcome. That's pretty standard for us, I'd say. Nobody rolls out the red carpet for a detective, right? Yeah. Say, Kaito-san, it looks like we've got some free time, so let's say we grab some food. Now that you mention it, I am getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs>